What are you thinking? What did you do to my trophy? Trophy? We were humans before we became vampires. You mustn't forget the Anne Rice principles for vampire behavior. I stalked her, I caught her, I fed from her, and I mounted her on a pedestal. It was a lot of trouble. Oh no, 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 down, you must learn to control your urges better. She works for the tower and is taking care of us. Why did you attack her? Well, she was so attractive. I could smell her blood from the other side of the tower. When I saw how attracted you were to her as well, it was too hard to resist. After all these decades and what have I taught you, you've learned almost nothing. Are you saying me? I've learned nothing. You've taught me almost nothing. It's been nearly a century and you've still not even taught me how to fly. When you've shown me that you're ready, I'll teach you. But here, here's a lesson in flight for you to figure out for yourself. In the previous chapter of Encounter at the Dark Tower, my brother appeared at my bedroom door late one night, to take me to meet Dracula. Tony, we don't have to do this. Each spring it seemed, Dracula would vacation, leaving his castle in Transylvania to stay at the Dark Tower, which is next to the beach near our home. Blah, blah, I am Dracula. I vacation here for the deco decor. Transylvanian Gothic can be so dreary this time of year. I was skeptical about Dracula and his son Countdown, but John convinced me to visit Dracula's vacation home to meet him. Before that, one of the Vacation Tower's employees was slaughtered by Countdown, and the stakes became even higher for us. For vampires, killing is a part of life. Dracula did what he could, to keep his killing discreet, and with the least impact possible. Dracula's son, in contrast, had no such code of behavior, and where the death blow by a different vampire would be quick and essentially painless. Countdown could keep his victims alive and conscious as they drowned in their own blood. And this would last as he devoured them from within, not finishing until he left behind only their skin. John, who likely knew nothing about that, scratched at the bandage over his neck artery and replied with a fiendish smile. Then it's time to depart. By way of a warning, which essentially was what all of this Dracula stuff was about, John gave me one more opportunity to back out. Dracula says that Countdown possesses ruthless and uncontrollable tendencies. So, if you come along, you have to listen to me very carefully, and follow whatever I tell you to do. We don't want to set off a monster, you know. But I don't believe any of that. Heck, this is pure trash. I mumbled to myself as we deviously slipped away from our darkened home, not knowing what we would face ahead. On the way, we met Bill, my brother's short wild friend, waiting impatiently down the street toward the beach. His face lit up the sidewalk as it glowed like a thousand firebugs from excitement. Hey, looks like you got the little guy to come out after all. Who's calling the little? This vertically challenged friend of my brother's is so short he has to look up to tie his shoelaces. Whoa, hang on there, tough guy. I've seen you try to play with the yo-yo. Not a good look. Darn it! Some real attitude on this kid, John. If this were the Fellowship, you would be the dwarf. Okay, I guess that must make you the Hobbit then. Why don't you just shut up?
Okay, okay. Settle down, guys. We don't have much time. We're supposed to meet Dracula at 10. And now you see exactly why we're doing this. As we started down the ominous concrete pathway toward the tower, they warned me to keep my bratty mouth shut if I knew what was good for me. To the left, a wall of darkness moved along with us as the path sharply fell off into a deep ravine. To the right and above, a wall of trees watched and listened. Bill hummed something to himself pleasantly as my knees grew steadily weaker. From here we gotta be really careful. John said. Black guards are all over the place. I concentrated on the rhythmic click of my brother's boots against the gravel. Until his heels sharply stopped and I noticed his attention focused on a rustling tree branch. My heart throbbed in panic as a glimmering shaft of steel appeared in the hand of my crouching brother. Just then, a raccoon scurried across the path and disappeared into the ravine. John slipped the huge hunting knife back into his belt and resumed his pace. I followed, stunned. I had heard of the black guards, keepers of the tower, straight from evil, burning hell. What a laugh! They zoom around, grab old ladies, devour their flesh and leave them to rot under that little stone bridge. That bridge was getting closer. You can see the tower from here. We passed the bridge with no problems and entered the clearing at the foot of Tower Hill. At the very top of the menacing mountain stood the proud, all-powerful structure. A fortress of black trees surrounded it. Then I smelled it, the odor of stinking, rotted flesh. Dracula throws the corpses of his helpless victims into that cesspool. Bill said looking wilder and stranger even than before. This reminded me over a rising tinge of nausea in my gut, that the tower had once been attached to an old sewerage plant servicing the area. Tony, we don't have to do this. We can go back home if you want to. No. I want to go. I want to meet Dracula. My Adam's apple took a sudden dip. I thought I caught a glimpse of black streaks. My mouth opened to take back what I'd just said but I couldn't even mutter a word. My mind screamed, take me home. But my mouth was silent. And that's when it seems, Dracula became aware we were coming. Oh my, it seems John has managed to bring the child with him after all. We headed up the path. A wailing screech pierced my already deteriorating ears. I think they know we're here. Bill said, grinning sheepishly as John led the way up the miles of path. I think they know we're here. What is that? Do I hear children's voices? When we reached the base of the tower, the metal door lay unnaturally open. I felt like black guards, or the bang dogs of hell could jump out at us at any moment. Hey, where's Dracula? I thought you said he'd meet us here. I don't know. He said he'd be here. It's a bit strange. I thought I saw something moving over there when we were walking up. Could it be him? Bill, are you okay? You almost seem to be changing colors. I'm telling you, I saw something. Don't you believe me? I'm gonna check it out. Whoa! What the- What's he doing back there? John, there's a body back there. It's not the source of the smell or anything, but- Bill, I think we've got him scared enough as it is now. Just tone it down. I'm not kidding. There's a dead body back here. Bill, that's enough. He's really scared. Dracula is probably still up in his study. He would have taken us there anyway. Make sure to stay close to me. It's easy to get lost if you make a wrong turn. We had to go through the tower library to get to Dracula's study. There were many well-worn books, displayed between dark corners draped in shadow, where I could imagine lurking terrors of ages past hiding, and ready to emerge upon us at any moment. When we finally reached Dracula's study, he was nowhere to be found. John had a small fit. I don't understand it. Dracula, where are you? Despite my terror, I was beginning to grow suspicious that this was all some elaborate setup John had arranged with other friends of his. We left Dracula's study, not knowing that we were being watched. I could just barely make out the silhouette of him crouched inside his cape. He released a vicious growl and pointed a pale bony finger at us. Run! Run! My brother frantically screamed. You! 
The one who's been spending so much time with Dracula. You will be my next trophy. Wait! Stop! I don't know what got into me or why I turned back. Maybe I was more scared of running into the unknown than staying beside my brother. I believed somehow, that at any moment, my brother could clobber the monster if he really wanted to. And then something about where we were, reminded me of a moment from my brother's favorite book. And I don't know exactly why, but Countdown ended up not killing John that day. What the... what just happened? Where were you, Dracula? We were looking all over the place. My apologies, I was looking for this, but it seems I didn't need it after all. And Dracula, this is my brother who I... I'm so different from what you've told me. Just coming all the way here today is a true act of bravery. But I came back just in time to see the impression he made on Countdown. And what an impression that was. You must be extremely proud of this young man, John. And then I saw something I'd never seen before. John smiled at me in agreement and looked, could it be? Proud. Things changed between us from that day on. John never again tried to scare me with threats about this or that. And we never feared Countdown again either. Dracula said that something had happened to him that day. He was a new vampire. More serious, more eager to learn than he'd been before. The first thing Dracula taught him after that was how to revive the tower employee he killed. Using the life force he'd taken from her but hadn't fully consumed, she wouldn't come back the same. But she would eventually recover. And if she chose, she could then become a vampire herself. Or not. Dracula emphasized that this was something they did not do lightly or often. He said this looking at John who looked away. John seemed to have learned something too, from the hit he'd taken from Countdown. And Dracula understood. Though he looked a bit disappointed. What didn't work out was that we couldn't find Bill anywhere. He seemed to have taken a wrong turn somewhere and became lost in the maze of the tower's hallways. Hello! Can anybody hear me? Is anybody there? John? Tony? Dracula? What the? Where is everybody? How do I get out of here? Anybody? Please, help! Acting as vampires, wasn't it? 